Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be talking about how to run JavaScript with JavaScript and how you can use that to make something like your own JavaScript interactive console like you see on the screen here. So let's get right into that. All right, so before we start talking about how this actually works, I'm going to teach you a little bit about how JavaScript works. So unlike other languages like C or C++, JavaScript is not compiled. It is interpreted at runtime. So there's a program called the JavaScript interpreter that is part of every single browser that will actually basically translate your JavaScript into ones and zeros that your computer will understand. And fortunately for us, there's functions in JavaScript that will actually invoke this, this translate process. One such example is the eval function. Now this eval function uh, has a lot of issues with it. As you can see, right off the bat, we get a warning saying that it is an enormous security risk and it's horrible. There's a whole section called never use eval. It's a dangerous function. Clearly this function is not meant to be used. Um, but it does recommend that there is a, a better method here or rather a class, the function class, that we can use to do pretty much the same thing that is less susceptible to these issues. So let's take a look at the function class. We have a constructor here, and we can pass in a string that will be interpreted as JavaScript by the JavaScript interpreter. And not only is this method going to be faster than using eval, because it is far more optimized, but it is also going to be a little bit safer due to some scoping issues that we would have if we used eval. I'm not going to get too deep into that, but basically function is not perfect. It still does have some issues. For example, you'd never want to use this to run code that uh, could run on someone else's machine. So let's say I'm one user, I write some code, it gets uploaded to a server, and that code could get run on someone else's machine. That is potentially harmful, but for something like this, where I'm the only person who can run this code, this isn't getting saved anywhere and run by anyone else, it is a perfectly good use of this function object. So let's look at how we're going to use this. I actually have the code for this JS console in the JS console right here. And if we look at this run JavaScript function, you can see it takes in some text then we'll just go ahead and create a new function object with that text and then call that function. We'll also go ahead and just catch any exception that gets thrown from here and call console.error so it gets printed to the console. Now you're probably wondering how I hijacked the console over here because if I actually go ahead and try to run something over here, you can see all of the console output has been redirected to this console. So how does that work? What we've actually done is we've redefined some of the console functions. If you look here, I've saved the, the regular console.log function as console.reallog, and then we just overwrite console.log to do whatever we want. In this case, we're going to just create a, a new div called the console line class, and we will add it to this, this console right here just by appending the child. I also have this function called console parse, which is basically just going to allow us to do things like have color. So if I console.log some string here, it's going to be nice and colored for us, uh, as you can see here. Of course, I haven't gone over all of the features in this JS console application that I created. If you want to know a little bit more about it, just to give you a brief overview, I'm using ACE, the ACE editor, which is a JavaScript library basically that allows you to have or embed rather this this sort of editor here it also is how i have syntax highlighting in all of these places i did actually make my own kind of syntax highlighter for the console output but it's a lot more basic than this and then in addition to that i have some like basic ui stuff like i can scale this if i want to and i can type whatever i want in here and it will actually run this in the console as well if I press the play button. And then we got, of course, the clear console button as well. So it's some simple stuff. Hopefully you guys can take what you've learned from today and create your own console application if you want, or really anything, since the ability to interpret JavaScript on the fly is incredibly useful. 
For example, it could be used to make a calculator application super easily and so much more. So get creative with this and hopefully you can make some cool things. If you guys are interested in editor-like videos like this, where we have a nice little JavaScript editor here, I have a whole series on making a file editor using PHP, where I can show you how to set everything up and also use PHP to make, delete, and all sorts of other stuff with files. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. See you next time.